you have your Bible, I would like for you to open them with me to the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I uh, was amazed at the song selection. Sometimes I have input and sometimes I don't say nothing to our music department. <clears throat> and this was one of those weeks when I said nothing. And man, that last song on the wind of the spirit, I was like, this, especially in the first service, it kind of freaked me out, to be honest, because I had, I, I had, I don't know, it just amazes me. When it's God's church, the Holy Ghost is in charge. Amen. And if you're visiting today, we're honored to have you. And you're welcome at our table, but you don't get to dictate our menu. Amen. Our menu today is Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. And I just, uh, and I mean that, we're delighted to have all of you with us at all of our campuses. And I'm excited today to preach. I got a dear friend here who surprised me. I had no idea. And they set him behind me. But Mar Marion Merck is sitting on the front way, row with his, or second row with his precious wife, Pat, who deserves a medal for putting up with him all these years. But Mar Marion and Pat, we love you. Amazing community leaders. And uh, we, they have touched Hall County in magnificent ways, brought healing to so many broken families. He is the uh, county coroner and over at Memorial Park Funeral Home. And when my father died, I called that man. And when my brother died, our family, her, the wife and Rich's Renna and the family, they called that man. And this is no advertisement. It's just, he's a precious man. And uh, my dad had to be buried in North Carolina. And he personally said, I want to ride in that hearse with him all the way. And that meant something to me. You know, you're very vulnerable in those times. And it means something to you when people treat you with great compassion. Can you say amen? Thank God for people who do ministry and what they do for a living. And we love you and appreciate you. I honor you today, sir. I'm reading today from John chapter 3. I'll begin reading with verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. I get happy every time I say that verse because I've been born again. I'm not the same man that I used to be. I am born again. And then notice this verse, the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes. Now, I want to talk to you about the wind of the Holy Spirit because in the Scriptures, the Holy Spirit is always uh, likened unto the wind. When He came in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, He came like a mighty rushing wind. And uh, the wind is a type throughout the Old and New Testament of the presence, the power, the anointing of the precious Holy Spirit. Wind can be so powerful it can tear down trees. It can be so powerful that you can see the news people stand sometimes in hurricanes and they're bent over and they're trying to walk and they walk like an old man because the wind is is blowing so hard. It has the power to move, to create, to destroy, to create upheaval and to destroy. About 30 feet above the ground, the wind is basically always blowing. The windiest part of the year lasts for seven months. And the windiest day of the year, because wind has patterns, they know this, is December the 31st, the calmest day. If you're planning something outside, September the 8th. <laughs> the wind always is calm that time and is kicked up the other time. The wind most often comes from the west. And pilots know this. It's something called a tailwind. That if you fly from the west coast to the east coast, you'll pick up a lot of miles per hour just because of the wind that comes from the west most of the year. 
But there are several other weeks and months that the wind comes from the east, from July to August. And then the wind comes down from the north, October through February the 16th. It's very, very clear patterns of the wind. The wind blows where it wants to, as the text says, and then he likens it. And you can hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it came from. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Wind often is used as the Spirit of God, as I said, as a type, a beautiful picture of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to boldly say this morning, I want the moving of the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Spirit to move in this church. Even in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible said the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And when the Spirit moved, the breath, the word uh, uh, breath there is, is spirit. And is, they're interchangeable. The breath of God is the Spirit of God. And when it moves on the water, it's like you can be out there and, it, and a wind can blow and you can't see it. And you'll see it first go across the top of the water. That's how the Holy Spirit is. And I'm interested in the moving of the Holy Spirit in my life, in my family, in this church, even in this service today, wherever you're with us. The Bible said the Holy Spirit came as a mighty rushing wind. And sometimes the wind blows strong and it's powerful and it's glorious. I'm so thankful we don't have a church that has up wind resistors to the moving of the Holy Spirit. May we always stay free at Free Chapel. May we always be open to a fresh wind and move of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it comes, it comes like a mighty rushing wind, and sometimes it's like a sweet breeze, just a little gentle breeze. But I don't care how he moves. I just want him to move. I don't care how he touches people. I just want somewhere before you leave here, in 25 minutes, I'll be done with this sermon. But somewhere, the wind, the breath, the anointing of God is going to breathe on you. I speak that by faith. I don't want to be a preacher without the moving of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be a pastor, a father, or a husband without the moving of the Holy Spirit. Let the wind blow in my church. Let the wind blow in my own personal life. Let the wind blow on Pentecost Sunday. I say, Lord, let the wind blow in our families again. Let the wind blow in the music and let it blow in the preaching and let it blow in the prayers and the praise of God's people. God controls the wind. The Bible talks about the four winds. The amazing confirmation of even scientific facts the Bible was written thousands of years ago, and it gives revelations about the winds. There are four winds, north wind, south wind, east wind, west wind, and God is in control of all of them. If you do a study on the winds in the Bible, each one of them have certain characteristics every time they show up, and there are all four keep showing up over and over and over and over. When it says a north wind came, that is... The direction in which the wind originates, it starts in the north or it starts if it's a west wind from the west and it goes out across the other direction. The Bible talks about, first of all, the east wind. It's the wind of judgment in the scriptures. When Joseph had the dream of the seven skinny cows, the Bible says this in Genesis chapter 41. It was a prediction about a famine that was coming for seven years. And the scripture said that there came a blast from the east wind that sprang up in his dream. And he saw the cows go from fat to skinny because a famine came. But notice what brought that famine, the east wind. The Bible says in Exodus that when the plagues were released onto the Egyptians, that it was the east wind in Exodus chapter 10 and verse 13, the east wind that brought the locust, the plague, the judgment of God upon that nation. And I think that it's so significant that in the story of Jonah, when he had that gourd that he was decided not to do what God called him to do and call Nineveh to repentance, the scripture said that an east wind was sent and it dried up the vine and the little uh, 
hatch, um, 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 what would you call it? I guess the, the gourd. I don't know how to describe that. You need to read the encyclopedia every once in a while. It's like, a, it's like Thatchet, and it was all around him, but the east wind dried it up, and he was very comfortable there, but it was gone. The Middle East, when a sandstorm comes, it comes from the east. It's judgment. Hosea chapter 13 and verse 15, and the east wind shall come after prosperity and so on. And the east wind shall come and the fountains will dry up and spoil the treasures. The winds that blow that we don't enjoy, the destructive winds. I want to declare to you today, they hit all of our lives. The destructive winds, the, the bad stormy winds that tear our life to pieces. And when they come, even then God is the master of the wind. He is in control of the storms and it feels like they're destroying destructive winds that are destroying our lives and tearing them all to pieces. Even then, God is still master of that wind. So the east wind has to do with destruction and pain and, and upheaval and, and, and a tearing up of lives. It brings in bad judgment or bad correction and, and, and into our life. And we think we're forsaken by God when in reality, God's the master of that wind. He's doing something and he's going to use that wind for his glory. And then there's the west wind. It blows in from the sea. And when that west wind blows in, it can change. And suddenly the season of your life changes. And then there's the south wind. It's described as a warm wind. Job 37 in verse 17. How are your garments warm when the comfort of the south wind comes? Jesus in Luke chapter 12 said, when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be heat because they recognize that the south wind brings heat and brings warmth. And then there's the north wind, lastly, and it's a cold wind. And these seasons hit our lives, destructive winds that tear our lives to pieces. And we wake up one day and say, what happened? It feels like my life is, I got a bad report. I, this happened. I lost my job, my life. Is, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then there's other times, a, a wonderful, sweet southern Wind, the south wind will fly, will, will, will come into our life and flow into our life and warm us back up. Good things happen. And then a north wind will come sometimes. And then sometimes a balmy wind from the sea, the west. All of these seasons, my point is God is in control of them all. He's working all things together for our good. God uses all those winds to purify you and to sanctify you and to draw you nearer to him. God, my prayer today on Pentecost Sunday is let that wind blow. Let that spirit move. I don't want to tell him what to do. I love the fact that in Psalm 78 and verse 26, it talks about the east wind. It actually begins to describe two winds. It says he caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and by his power he, bought, he, he brought the south wind. And you know what happened? Something miraculous happened. Because if you go on and read the next part of that, it talks about how that the people were hungry. In that whole chapter, it talks about the people were hungry in the wilderness and they wanted some meat and God got the wind to surround, and he's got from one end, go back to the other one. He goes back to the, go back to the other verse. He, he starts with the east wind, which is the bad, destructive thing. But then he follows up and he grabs the south wind, which is that sweet, warm, warm comforting wind. And he pulls the two and they get in circular motion and they surround quail. Next verse. They, they surround the quail and they bring so many quail. Just follow me in the Bible. Amen. And the, and the, and the quail, the quail, the Bible said, get in a wind tunnel. I want you to see it now. God is working in the destructive, bad stuff. And then he's got the good stuff and he's twirling it around and he's got quail 
for his hungry people and provision for his hungry people. And he says, it looks like it's bad, but when I get through with it, I'm going to mix good in with bad. And instead of tearing you up, it's going to take you up and I'm going to send the food down and I'm going to send the provision down. And the Bible said that he rounded up so many quail and fed them that it was, they were literally two cubits, which is knee deep in quail. I'm telling you the wind of God. Sometimes we don't understand why the winds are blowing in our life. We don't understand the harsh wind, the destructive wind. But if you don't, if you don't watch yourself, you, you'll start saying, God, stop that wind from blowing. And I don't like that wind, but it takes both winds. It takes the east wind and it takes the south wind. And when you learn that when he's, when things are going good, he's still good. And when things are going bad, he's still good. And he works the bad for the good. You can relax and in faith, raise your hands and praise the Lord. That's what you can do right in the middle of no matter what's all around you. You, God is still the master of the wind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those two winds work in conjunction. And one wind is not strong as those two working in your life. One wind cannot bring to you what the two working. So even if you're going through harsh winds and destructive things, if you will hold on to God, if you will learn to praise him in the midst of the storm, you will find out that he'll mix that south wind with that east wind and what looks like was going to destroy you will actually raise you and you'll come up stronger and you'll come up blessed and you'll come up the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I'm preaching better than you're letting on right now. I tell you that wind is working in every situation of our life. Thank God for the Holy Spirit right now. He is the wind. He is the wind. I think today that he'll use the winds of adversity. He'll use the winds of struggle. And he combines them and makes them into winds of blessing. It's all working together for the good. I like that all right now. Hallelujah. I feel it. I'm coming on. And if you, I know where I'm going and you just sit there and look at me. But before this gets over, you're going to become a windmill. Some of you are just sitting there, but the river is about to get moving. And when the river gets to, because the wind's going to blow and then the old windmill. Turn to somebody and say, that's you. The old windmill. They're all working together. How many of you believe it's all working together? It's all working together. Maybe you're going through a storm. Maybe you're tired and weary. But I just want to encourage you today. God's using all of it. And not to destroy you, but to bless you and get you ready. Get you full of his spirit. Get you full of faith. Get you full of total dependency upon Jesus. He makes them all do his work. The Bible said in Psalms 148 and verse 7, Praise you, the Lord, from the earth, you dragons and fire and hail and vapor and stormy winds that fulfill his word. The stormy winds fulfill the prophecies and the promises and the word of God. You can't have the fulfillment of the word of God in your family, in your life without stormy winds. It's not just sea breeze and pleasant breezes, but it's stormy winds that fulfill and bring to pass. It's usually right after a stormy wind that a fulfillment of a promise will come through. Just when you were thinking about giving up, just when you thought I might as well throw in the towel, that's when you throw your hands up and you say in the middle of the storm, God, I don't know where you are, but I know you're the peace speaker. And he knows how, according to Mark 7, to step out of the boat and raise his voice and speak to the wind and say, peace, be still. And when he does, he's going to reward you on the other side of that storm. And he's going to fulfill his word through the stormy winds. God is sovereign. He rules from the heavens. He knows what he is doing. You know, the Bible said in Exodus chapter 13 that the east wind brought the locusts. But this is interesting. 
And then he sent a west wind to take them away. It says in verse 19 that he sent a different wind, a west wind. So if God allows things to hit you and devour, because that's what locusts do, devour the fruit, devour the harvest, God says, I'm just going to try and see if they're, in me for the, if they're with me for the stuff or do they really love me with all of their heart, mind, and soul. And if you hold on, the, God sent one wind and it, and it brought the locusts, but he sent a west wind and it took them away. I'm so thankful he's got a wind that can blow your problem away today and you can walk out of here knowing that my God controls the wind in his fist. God can reverse the wind. Shout amen, somebody. God can reverse it this morning. I don't care what the doctor has said. God can reverse it. I know, and we appreciate them, but I'm going to tell you, they don't rule the heavens, and they don't rule the earth, and the Holy Spirit is more powerful. This wind can blow cancer out of your body. This wind can blow disease and demons out of your home. This wind can say to Satan, this time you lose, because the wind can take it out and take it away and reverse the curse. Hallelujah. Let the wind blow. Let the wind move. Let it move in your life this morning. Do more than hear a sermon. Believe and ask for the wind. I'm hungry for it this morning. You know, God is revealed in the wind. If you're having a storm, I want you to picture and visualize what I'm saying because the Bible is clear that when God shows up, he uses wind as his vehicle. Bible said that in 2 Samuel 22 and verse 11, he rides upon a chariot and did fly. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. If the wind is blowing, you may not see and feel God like you, like you, when you're on top of the mountain and it's a sunshiny day. And then there's those days when the winds and the storm is raging, category five. But I promise you, according to that text, that's what he rides in on. He's mighty and he's strong and he has the wings of the wind. Psalms 104, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You are great. You stretched out the heavens. You make the cloud your chariots and you walk upon the wings of the wind. Don't resent the wind. That's how God comes to you. It's how he gets things done. Nahum Nahum, chapter one in verse three, the Lord has his way. Listen to this in the whirlwind. When it feels like your life is going crazy, when it feels like you're losing and being just torn to pieces, the Bible said, That Job, the Lord answered Job. Anybody feel like you've been in a storm like Job? The Lord answered Job, not out of sunshine, out of a whirlwind. Out of a whirlwind. When God's going to let his voice be released, if he ever speaks to his people, it's when they're in that kind of tornado activity that's going on and you feel like it's out of control, that's when his voice will begin to boom. But I'm with you and I promise you, I won't leave you and I won't forsake you. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit and the word spirit in Hebrew is breath. The wind of God will raise up a standard against him. Don't resist the east wind. Don't resist the south and west and the north winds. Tell God, just let it flow. Because if he releases one of them, he will release the other ones. And ultimately, he'll get glory out of whatever is going on in our lives. God has always been in the wind. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, in the beginning of creation, he formed man and breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. He's always been in the wind. Let him breathe on you this morning. You need the wind of God. You need the breath of God. I need the wind of God 
on my preaching. The choir needs the wind of God on their singing. We need the wind of God to touch our young people and touch our children this morning. We need the wind of God. How dare us think that we can just come to church and go through a service and think that that's, that's what it really makes a difference. It's nothing without the breath, the wind, the Holy Spirit. He's The Bible said the word killeth, but the spirit or the wind brings to life. Ezekiel proved it in Ezekiel 37. He got in the valley of dry bones. There was nothing but the Bible said, and the bones were scattered and mixed. Have you ever read that? It said they were mixed bones. That means that Bill's bones were mixed up with Tom's bones and ankle bones over here and a rib was over here and a skull was over here and a backbone was over here and that one's Sally's and that one's Sue's and that one's Tom's and that one's Tim's and they all got mixed up. You ever felt like you went through such a storm that your whole everything, your bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, your family is just torn all to pieces. And God asked the prophet a powerful question. He said, I know it looks bad. It almost sounds like an order at Waffle House. It's scattered and battered. And, and my God, look at that mess. But then he asked him this. Boy, I feel this. Then he asked him, can these bones still live? Do you think I can do anything with this scattered mess? Do you think I can do anything with this situation that everybody says can't live? And he says, Lord, you know. And then the Lord said, prophesy. Open your mouth and speak life. And then he said, and speak to the four winds. Oh, uh uh-oh. Speak to the wind. Prophesy to the wind. All the winds. This is the revelation. It takes all the winds to bring the revival. You can't have a revival with everything perfect in your life. You can't really get in the greatest moves of God until you've gone through the storm and you've gone through the heat and you've gone through the cold and you've gone through the balmy breeze and you've stood strong in the middle of it all. But when you've done that, then you stand right there and you say, Lord, I'm asking for the wind to blow on these scattered bones. And all of a sudden I could see it in my mind, the foot bone runs over and connects to the leg bone and the leg bone runs over and it was over there with Susie's hip bone, but it ran over here and jumps back on him and that, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't care how messed up your life is. I don't care how messed up your family is. When the wind begins to blow, it blows out unforgiveness. It blows out atheism. It blows out demonic lies. It blows out rebellion. It blows out addiction. It blows out family squabbles. It heals everywhere it blows. Somebody give the Lord a mighty praise where you're listening to me. Hallelujah. You can't give me a Pentecostal amen. I'll take a Baptist now. You know, you know, uh, if, if you ever go out west, they have a lot of these windmills, especially in the big open, like out in the deserts. If you ever drive from California, L.A. area uh, to Palm Springs or going to Vegas in the road trip. We've done that before with our family. And there's one area where they have hundreds of these big wind propellers that are in valleys and sometimes in mountains and sometimes just on the desert, but they've learned where the current of the wind goes. And I mean, you'll see thousands of them, thousands. It's it's unbelievable. And the strangest thing, is you may see a thousand of them just a spinning, but always there's one in there. And I just want to say 10,000 windmills can't be wrong. If the Spirit's always moving over here and over there and over here and over there, and you're sitting there like,
I don't know about you, but I'm saying, Lord, let it blow in this house this morning. God, I'm so tired of dead religion. My sails up. I'm ready. I'm ready. Holy Spirit, however you want to do it, if it comes from the northeast corner of the top balcony, or if all you got to do, you know, get one on every row. If you can get one on every row, and how long are you going to sit there like this when the Spirit's moving? At some point, you've got to say, here I am, Lord, and you blow right here. I'll respond. I want to be a windmill. Come on, give him a praise. Turn to somebody and say, you have to be ready. Go with the wind. Be a wind chaser. Oh, y'all are dead. Be a wind chaser. If anybody gets a little breeze, you need to get with it. Get your, get your, get your sail up. Get your old windmill to moving again. I'm waiting on God to speak to me. And everybody around you, wow, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> 10,000 windmills can't be wrong. It's blowing, you're just not receiving. <laughs> I like this sermon. I'm good preaching, Brother Franklin. Amen. I agree. I'm almost done. But what is interesting about wind is this. Do you know that you can cause the wind to blow? Where does it come from? It takes two things. Number one, you have to have high, a high pressure area up in the heavens. And then you have to have a low pressure area down here. And what happens is out of that low pressure, there comes heat. And the heat is what goes up. And that's what gets the wind to moving down through that cycle. In other words, what I want you to understand is when you're in the low pressure areas of life, it's time to heat up. Time to heat up your prayers, heat up your praise. What do you do when you're low and under pressure? You heat up because if you want the wind to come, it's going to take some heat in low pressure. And once you begin to praise him, not when you're on top of the world, but when you're down, turn up the heat where you are. This is what Elijah did. The Bible said that he prayed and the servant came and said, I don't see nothing. And then he turned up the heat and prayed again and prayed again and sent him back seven times. And on the seventh time, the servant said, there is a great wind that is coming and in the wind is a hand and in the hand is a rain and something is headed our way because when you get in that low pressure area, you have to heat up. And a great wind and a great cloud and great rain came. I want to close with this. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, everybody say, that's the day. They were all in one accord, in one place. I want to get in one service like this before I die and go to heaven. I want to get in one service where every windmill is no resistance. Everybody. They were in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I want to be so sensitive to that wind. There appeared unto them tongues of fire. They began to speak 
in the Holy Ghost. It said upon each of them, quick, next verse. And they began to be filled with the Spirit and speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Next verse. As the Spirit gave them the utterance. You know, he's still doing that today. You know, he's still baptizing people in the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, he still wants to fill you so full of the breath and the wind of God. I want to be so sensitive to that spirit that if it starts moving, we just go with the wind. You may be in a storm and you may be going through something you never dreamed you would dream. But if you won't give up, God's going to turn that wind into a tunnel, a blessing in your life. And on this day, I want us to just say from our heart, God, I'm open. God, I'm ready. God, I'm willing. I preached in uh, Nashville, Tennessee this week to hundreds of pastors. And afterwards, I met this young preacher by the name of, Ma his name's Malachi. And he was there at the Ashbury Revival. And his best friend is the young pastor that just got up at that Ashbury, you, if you haven't heard of it, it's a revival that broke out earlier this year and it went all over the world. It went all over Instagram. It was more popular than the trash that's on there every day. And he said it was the most glorious thing. He said it just showed up. He said it was so, they just sung a few songs. And you just never know when the wind's going to hit. And he said the pastor just preached a simple little message and all of a sudden he said it was like all of heaven hit that room. And it went for day after day, for week after week, and you could not get on the property. So many people were coming from all over the world. And my cry is, Lord, let the wind blow in our lives and in our church and in our family this morning. Anybody hungry for that? Get up on your feet. And I know this is so out of touch with the times we're in, but who in the world wants a church in touch with the times we're in? I want every person under the sound of my voice that wants an outpouring and a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to hit you and your family to get out and come stand in these aisles this morning as an act of of surrender as an act of saying, I don't want to be that one windmill that just stands here. I want God to move fresh through the wind of his Holy Spirit in my life today. That wind can blow out addiction. That wind can blow out fear. That wind can blow out the power of the enemy that's destroying your life. And this is your moment. Jesus put it like this. He tied that message of wind and breath of God to these words. You must be born again. You must be born. You must have the breath of God. And you don't choose. He chooses. When the wind shows up, He chooses. He's here this morning. Precious Holy Spirit is here. Let's raise our hands all over this room at every campus, every pastor, every... I, I want our pastors, I want as many pastors as I can get just to gather on these steps and come and maybe up on the stage with me. We're going to do a little bit different today. We don't do this every Sunday. And at some point, if you need to leave, you feel free to leave. But we're going to lay hands on some people. We're going to lay hands and anoint people with oil. We're going to pray for people. So pastors, quickly make your way up here and help me. I need your help today. And we're going to lay hands on as many people as we can and believe for the Holy Spirit. Now, all you've got to do today is hunger and want it. So lift up your hands. I don't believe you would have walked down here if you didn't believe it was real. And say, Holy Spirit, I want the mighty rushing wind this morning. I'm ready. I'm ready for the wind of the Spirit. Come on. Let's worship just a moment. Let's worship. Whatever's going on, maybe you've got broken pieces in your family. Family's been torn to pieces. Can these bones live? Raise your hands and declare, wind of God, Holy Spirit, you can do it. 
I can't do it, but you can do it. It's not by might or power. It's by my breath, by my spirit, by my wind. Begin to praise Him for your healing. Begin to praise Him for your miracle. Begin to praise Him for restoration. Begin to praise Him for a fresh wind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Provision is in that wind. The quail was in that wind. All your needs are supplied according to His riches and glory. But it comes through the conduit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Raise your hands and let's worship now. Come on. Let's begin to pray now. Let's begin to pray now, pastors. Begin to lay hands. Pray. worship you this morning. Move upon our praise. Heat up. Heat up. If you're in a low pressure, a low place, heat up your worship. Heat up your desire. Heat up your spirit right now through praise.
I'm not being silly. You need to read the Bible. You'll believe in the supernatural if you'll read the Bible. You can't, you can't ignore the Bible and then expect to have faith. But if you live in the Word, the Word will produce in you the reality of a living God. Everybody today, I want us to repent. You know what the Apostle Peter said in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38? said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the wind. Let's see it again now. What have you got to do? What have I got to do? Repent. And every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then it says in the next verse, for this promise is unto you and unto your children. And to all who are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, I feel a real peaceful spirit here this morning. We don't have to work nothing up. All we have to do is flow with that wind. I want you one more time to raise your hands and say, Lord, I repent. Keep that verse up. Repent and be baptized. Say, Lord, I repent. Wash me and cleanse me. I'm holding on to Acts 2.38. I believe that's the truth, and I repent of my sins. Wash me in the blood, and Lord, I'm going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you will fill me. I will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is available right now. He didn't say it had to be done in that order. So before you get baptized in water, if you've never been, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So one more time, raise your hands and say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We're going to linger just another moment. Let's lift our hands. Some of the greatest services I've ever been in is when you went a little bit longer. When you went a little, I feel a little nudge saying, hold on now. 
If you'll wait upon the Lord, I'll renew their strength. If you'll wait upon the Lord, the weary will be lifted up. If you'll wait upon the Lord, I'm going to heal some people. If you'll wait upon the Lord, I'm going to give a prophecy to somebody. Just lift your hands and begin to say, Lord, the wind is bringing the word. The wind is bringing the healing. The wind is bringing the miracle. Begin to sing it, singers. Worship Him. That's it. Come on and praise Him. Heat up. Heat up even in the low pressure here. Put your hand on the person beside you. One person. Just put your hand on them. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to let the wind just blow through us like a wind tunnel all over this room. I know some of you are new to this, and I'm so glad you're here today because there's so much more to God and to church than just, just another little whatever. I'm not making light of that. When God uses all kinds of people, all kinds of styles, and we thank God for everybody naming the name of Christ. But there is more, Cole. There is more. There is truly Pentecostal power. That's not a denomination. That's a Bible phrase. So right now, begin to pray as they begin to... Y'all got to flow now. Let's go. Sing it again. Ready, 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 go. Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Sing that song. Ready, 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 go. Now begin to pray one for another. Feel me, Lord. Just relax. Just worship the Lord. Let Him mark you this morning. Let Him feel you. You know, you open your mouth and begin to verbally praise the Lord. Give Him a thanks. Give Him a praise. Speak His name. Verbally praise the Lord with your tongue, with your mouth. Speak His praise. You'll never be filled until you're magnifying God. They were magnifying God in the upper room. Begin to praise Him. That's it. He's been waiting on you to release that praise. To heat up. One more time. that today how many of you feel a fresh wind fresh wind fresh wind raise your hand those who want to linger we're just going to linger a little while so after I pray this blessing just feel free to go and be blessed I know I've already dismissed once I'm dismissing again those of you who want to linger a little bit, we'll just worship God. You don't have to do it any style. You don't have to do it like me, but when you begin to verbalize praise, that's the key. The Holy Spirit, wait, he, he moves. Sound is spiritual. The sound of your voice. 
is spiritual. Use it for praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Those of you who repented for the first time this morning and gave your heart to Jesus, go straight back to Next Steps booth, right back of the building, down this hall, and get signed up for water baptism. And I'll baptize you right here on this platform in a couple of Sundays, right here in water. And it, you're fulfilling the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you all. Have a blessed, safe, wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Let's just continue to worship. Feel free to leave, do whatever you want to do. I just, I just want to just praise him. Just another minute. Let's just wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody you're glad they came to church today. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus.